What about Francis Marion, since he's the fellow who gets vilified by the British press? Um, he was wily and elusive. Now, why should that be a negative? That's what he was supposed to be, folks. Uh, he's also described in the post-Patriot um, critiques as being a nasty sort, a terrorist. Well, I think we've learned all too often in the 20th and 21st century that one man's terrorist is another's freedom fighter. Francis Marion was a partisan, and I use that term. He was a freedom fighter. He was supposed to be wily and elusive. He understood that he couldn't fight a set battle with the British. His job was to inflict in, uh, damage where he could, whether it was on a garrison or a supply train, and he was very, very effective. In fact, he got his nickname, the Swamp, Pop, the Swamp Fox, from, of all people, Bannister Tarleton. The partisan leaders in South Carolina, Tar uh, excuse me, Sumter was called uh, the Gamecock, fight, rather rash. But after chasing Marion around the countryside, Tarleton, uh, and I, this is a paraphrase of what he said, of Let's go back and get the Gamecock. We can find him. Marin is as elusive as a fox. Now, what about the really pretty serious charge that Marion hunted Cherokee, the, he, it was Indians, but it would have been the Cherokee for support? That's absolutely not true. In fact, he was involved in the Cherokee War. He was a part of that campaign in the 1760s. In fact, a lot of revolutionary leaders got their training in the French and Indian War, of which the Cherokee War in the Carolinas was a part. He wrote home during the Cherokee War. He said, the next morning, we proceeded by order of Colonel James Grant, who was the British officer commanding the South Carolina and regular forces against the Cherokee, to burn down the Indian cabins. Some of our men seemed to enjoy this cruel work, laughing very heartily at the curling flames over the tops of the huts. But to me it appeared a shocking sight. Poor creatures, thought I, we surely need not grudge you such miserable habitations. Now that's hardly the thoughts of a bloodthirsty Indian killer. What about the charge of raping his female slaves daily. There's no evidence of that. It's easy to cast charges at a slave owner. But prior to the revolution, Marion owned very, very few slaves. He was not a rich man. After the war, he did marry a wealthy heiress who owned uh, many slaves. Now, did Marion commit atrocities as bad, if not worse, than the British? Um, at least there's an admission that the British committed atrocities in the Carolinas. Some of Marion's men took no prisoners. That's a fact. Now, this was not an order that Marion had issued. The men simply acted on their own. And the this is a reaction to the fact that Marion's men on occasion when captured were executed by either the Tory or the British. Parson Mason Weems wrote biographies of two Revolutionary War heroes in the years after the Revolution as Americans were looking for national identity. He wrote a biography of George Washington in which many of the favorite stories of George Washington from the cherry tree to tossing the silver dollar across the Potomac appear. But he also wrote a biography of Francis Marion and it's in that biography that the story of Marion sharing the baked sweet potato with the British officer appears. Now, Thomas Sumter, who is part of the amalgamation of the character in the movie The Patriot, was cruel to Tories. But at one point, he had captured the British officer 
a regular, James Weems. When he took Weems into custody, Weems had on his person a list of every farmstead and plantation he had burned in the northeastern part of South Carolina. Had Sumter released that or mentioned that, his men probably would have torn Weems to pieces. He tossed it in a fire, burned it. 